Hi everyone, welcome to today's lecture. My name is Divna and as I mentioned in a previous presentation, today we will talk about something that is called metapopulations. So the metapopulation can basically be defined as a population of populations as its founder explains or a group of groups that is made up of the same species. Uh, basically each population or a subgroup is separated from all other subpopulations but movements of individuals from one population to another occurs regularly. Uh, this would be a diagram of a concept of metapopulation so little red circles represent those populations and the errors within them would represent the interactions they are practicing. Uh, just as we define the population as a group of interacting individuals of the same species occupying a given habitat, a few presentations uh, before, here the metapopulation is represented as a collection of local populations interacting within a large area of a region. So you could imagine it as a as represented exactly here so in the larger area many populations interacting within each other so in in, in the case we want to examine the difference of interactions between the same population and between few meta populations um, th the models of population for this case the population dynamics uh, the one that is used is assuming that populations are closed so no immigration or immigration is happening, so nobody's going in or out within the limits of the closed population, and therefore that population growth is solely a function of processes of birth and death. Uh, in this case, every population would live on its own without any interactions from a side, so it's basically on its own. And the thing is, this is not really a often case happening in the nature. Uh, in this diagram, it's showing the, the concept of metapopulation, and it says that distribution of species, which is here this defined with this blue dashed line around, is composed of a group of sub or local populations, which would be the red circles, and they are always linked by some action of dispersal which would be represented with these arrows. These processes of interaction between metapopulation is what keeps populations healthy and resistant and also is giving a space for a gene flow and, and adaptations. Just to outline the ecological importance of the concept of metapopulation, we can say that every population consist of larger core population that functions as a main source of immigra immigrants to smaller satellite populations which would be the, the main parts of uh, something we call metapopulation. Dynamics of every metapopulation is governed by two sets of processes operating at, at two distinctive um, spatial scales. So one is a local scale, and in this case, uh, which is also called the within patch scale, the individuals move and interact with each other in the course of their routine of feeding and breeding activities, you know, like daily routine. Populations growth and regulation at the local scale are governed by regular demographic processes as, as birth, death. And the second case, which is called the metapopulation regional scale, this is composed of a set of local populations that compose the bigger metapopulation. At this scale, dynamics are governed by interactions of local populations, namely the processes of dispersal and colonization. So you can imagine like a city, so a local scale would be able to things that go around within a city, so people living within the same city in their daily routine, and then you can have like the state with many different cities having their daily routine, but also there are some type of interactions within city, like people traveling out of the city into the other one and other way around, and this can be considered as a metapopulation regional scale. 
So at this point it is important to mention uh, something that is connected with the extinction. So basically significance of metapopulation concept in a matter of probability of extinction of a population. Um, because all local populations have a probability of extinction, the long-term persistence of the metapopulation depends on the process of recolonization. Does the probability of local extinction for the core population be extremely small if inner or metapopulation dynamics stay in the healthy balance? When we want to define something as a metapopulation, there are four conditions we we need to take into consideration to be sure we are on the right way. First would be that it is a suitable habitat that occurs in discrete patches that may be occupied by a local breeding population. Second is that even the largest populations have a substantial risk of extinction habitat patches, something we just mentioned. Third is that a Metapopulation may, must not be too isolated, so it prevents the localization after local extinction. It needs to ensure that interaction within patches is available as an option. And as a fourth rule, the dynamics of the local populations are not synchronized. Even though the, it's the patches or subpopulations of the same species living in similar uh, ground environment, their dynamics does not have to be completely synchronized in the sea. These rules, quoting rules, we can also define a, as a recipe for a long-term survival since metapopulation system is a good way of ensuring a long-term stability in a population dynamics. For example, immigrants from one population, which may for example be experiencing a population boom, are likely to recolonize habitat which has been left open by extinction of another population. Um, they may also immigrate to a small population and rescue that population from extinction, and this is something that is called a rescue effect. Uh, such a rescue effect may occur because declining populations leave niche opportunities open to the rescuers. Um, this is connected with the immigration and migration topic I talked in the, in the last two presentations and you can see there are much more behind the scene than it's only visible in a, in a first glance. So this type of mig migrations have more ecological role than only changing the, the habitat towards the more pleasant environmental conditions and food availability. So to conclude, we can say that metapopulation dynamics is a balance between colonization and extinction. Here you can see a diagram of uh, types of metapopulation, sorry for a typo here. So main five uh, types of metapopulation organization or our models. So the, the metapopulation models are all share the dynamics of extinction and migration among patches, as I mentioned before. However, each case demonstrates a different range of variations in migration. Uh, here, these lines you can see they indicate migration. The dashed lines indicate high migration, and, and hollow circles indicate unoccupied patches. So the first model will be a classical Levins model. This is the guy who started thinking about the whole idea of metapopulation concept and he gave it a name and then uh, those rules I told you about. So the first classical Levins model states that metapopulation uh, is distributed over many patches of suitable habitat with significantly less interaction between patches than within a patch. So he says that it, it is favored to interactions within the same subpopulations than among different populations. Um, population dynamics in which a, within a patch were simplified uh, to the point where only presence and absence were considered and each patch is the m in this model is either populated or not. So very simple, everything is black or white, populated or not, 
strong interactions or no interactions at all. Uh, the, in the second case of a mainland island model, uh, it represents a system of patches or, or subpopulations that are located near a large mainland patch or subpopulation, so mainland and smaller ones around it, and then none populated one as well. Dispersed from the mainland can reach each of the small patches of subpopulation. It is assumed that mainland population does not go extinct, and if the mainland population does go extinct, neither does the meta population. So basically, this is an ultimate survival of a meta population because big mainland population is big enough to supply the the meta populations around it with the um, surplus of its individuals, so neither of them go ever extinct. Uh, third option is Apache population. In this case, all subpopulations are sufficiently close to function as a single subpopulation. And this means that enough individuals are migrating between subpopulations that the subpopulations are not at risk of going extinct at all. Uh, therefore, the single subpopulation is acting as a meta population. Basically, we can consider these. Um, the real idea of subpopulations within a population. So we can consider instead of a city, we can consider this as a building. So every family in the apartment is kind of separate, but they have really close contacts and they their interactions are more often and more intensive. In this model as well, the subpopulations are not independent and their demographics are closely linked. And also when a subpopulation goes extinct, it is not noticed because it is part of a large continuous meta population. However, if the single large population goes extinct, so does the meta population. Which means that if a single part goes extinct, you won't really notice because it's just a part of a, of a huge building. So if uh, one apartment gets empty, you won't notice. But uh, on the other hand, if the whole building is, is vanished, then the, neither a single apartment can survive. The last really defined model would be in a non-equilibrium model, this here. And in this case, each subpopulation acts as a separate metapopulation, so basically it is opposite from Apache population. Each meta population is extinction prone because of its isolation and small size. Uh, in this model, the subpopulations are completely independent and their demographics are not linked. And the subpopulations are separated by large interpatch distance so that no migration occurs and when a subpopulation goes extinct, it does not go recolonized. Uh, when extinction occurs, the subpopulations and the meta populations go extinct. What this means is that these populations are too far away, for example, physically, and they cannot interact anymore. The gene, gene flow is stopped. There's no migration of individuals between patches, and every population is basically on its own, and that's why they're really vulnerable and prone to extinction, because they cannot expect any quoting help from, from their relatives around. Uh, but in the other hand, as bad as it sounds, there are some light sides of it and this is how new species are born. So if you have a one species that is, uh, it happened to be really physically separated with no interactions anymore, after millions of generations they turn to be different species uh, with no availability of interaction in, in any case turns out to interspecies interaction. And of course, as everything in nature, it's nothing is black and white. So there are other options. We could call it altogether intermediate case, which means that any combination of, of mentioned models are is possible to to meet in the in the nature any combination of two or more models. And now something more alive that you can think of. What I was telling you about is the habitat fragmentation and uh, about the uh, 
the non-equilibrium patch we mentioned here and their trouble of, of a nice side uh, of new uh, species, it can also drive, as mentioned firstly, drive population extinct. And this is what we call today habitat fragmentation, um, influenced by human activity. So these pictures are showing how the making roads, patching uh, habitat for, for crops, using a lot of uh, forest trees for industry, or just a rising uh, human settlements in the natural habitat of different animals are just cutting their uh, interaction paths of different meta populations so they're becoming vulnerable and non resistant and their probability of extinction is getting higher and higher this is uh, one of the, of the biggest problems of, of today's society concerning the biodiversity protection and what people thought of considering this problem is something that is called the, the green bridges you can see them here so representing some kind of connection between two patches which were the one before anthropogenic influence they're making it possible for different populations to interact basically meta populations to continue their interaction and migration fluctuation gene flow and so on whatever it, it keeps them uh, safe healthy and with a lower risk of extinction in next presentation we will talk some other interesting stuff about animal behavior in the matter of ecology so do stay tuned. Talk to you soon. Goodbye.